Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about Jurassic Park, reasons I liked it, and reasons and things I guess you might want to think about when watching the movie. So, I have some notes today to try and stay focused. Okay, so first note. So, I did enjoy this movie, uh, even though there are things that you need to look out for in it, as in all movies, especially new ones. Um, but I liked it because the dinosaurs took center stage. Um, we got some new dinosaurs. We got some old dinosaurs. We got to see, we just, we got to see a lot of, you know, dinosaurs, <laughs> which I liked because I basically went to go see this movie or wanted to see it because it was a monster movie. I, I really like monster movies. I like Godzilla. I like dinosaur movies. I like just any sort of creature type movie. Okay. Uh, Tremors is another one that I like that they're actually redoing. So I just like critter type movies. Um, they even had some like updated dinos with the feathers and stuff, which is what the way they think that they look, that dinosaurs look nowadays. We watched the original Jurassic Park before watching this movie. And a lot of what they were saying in there was what people thought, you know, in 1990. So if you go back and you watch that and then you watch this one, you can see how things are a little bit different. The different ideas science has now about dinosaurs, which is all very interesting and cool, you know, just on a, like a personal level, just to see how science changes all the time. So, uh, two, what I really liked about this was that the men were in sort of very traditional roles. And what I mean by that is, Owen saves Claire a good bit. She, Claire does a, a lot of running, a lot of searching, stuff like that, but Owen saves her. And my favorite, my favorite sort of thing, or my favorite scene in this movie was the way Owen saved Claire from these dinosaurs over here, as you can see in this picture. I can't find a video clip of it. But basically, her back's up against the wall. The dinosaur's coming for her. She can't defend herself. And from the side, you get his hand, like, choking out this Dilophosaurus here. Right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Dilophosaurus. And, uh, you know, just slapping it down on the ground. And in the movie, he says, go on, get. And they all run away. <laughs> and I love that part of that movie. I thought that was great. Um, when it says, you know... It kind of gave you the dual meaning of dominion in there. <laughs> if you're watching it, uh, dominion, not just because, you know, the dinosaurs are stronger than us and become sort of like, they try to say the dinosaurs become an apex predator, but <clears throat> really throughout the movie, you can see just like we do with apex predators. Now uh, we use the dinosaurs and create them into different things for what we want them to be. So we're still the apex predator here and I think also when God gave us dominion over the earth, <laughs> I think that that's something, you know, with proper respect and everything. I don't think what Owen did is way too far out of reality for us to do. So <clears throat> there's that. Sorry. I got to silence this for a second. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So I really like that. So uh, the men play are the protectors in here. They stick to their morals, whatever they are, you know, good or bad. They stick to them. They have that. They're, they're not wishy-washy, basically. Um, <clears throat> you know, the uh, Ramsey Cole character, which is supposed to be the protege to the bad guy, you know, doesn't get so wrapped up in what one man wants to do that he loses his own moral compass. So I like that. Uh, let's see. Alan Grant, even though they have a section in there where he doesn't understand like the lingo, the new lingo or whatever. Um, I think that was kind of a sloppy way for them to say, Hey, look, he hasn't been part of the world. He's just been out there in his digs. It's a sloppy way to do it. But <clears throat> even he is looked at as like the protector as they go along. He even, he's the leader basically as they go along to try to escape the place. I'm not trying not to give too many spoilers, but spoilers. 
Um, I do like that they brought him and Sattler back together because I never really understood why they were separate in the first place. Um, but anyway, I do like that. And they were kind of like teenagers in this movie, just sort of following each other around. He's just following like her hair braid schemes and helping her and guiding her and things like that. So I like that. Ian Malcolm stays the same chaos loving character we have had completely the same thing. And that's sort of men, <laughs> men and women do change, but we basically have, we have our center core of who we are and that doesn't really change. So I like that they didn't try and change any of the characters too much. Um, three, uh, the story of stability they try to tell here, okay? Owen and Claire, it looks like they've gotten married, even though they never say that. If you look at their hands, there's wedding rings on them. So either the actors are wearing their wedding rings while they work, or these two characters have gotten married and it's just quietly have done so. And they're trying to provide a home for Macy, which is the clone from the last movie. All right, and that's sort of a... That's a very sort of noble thing to do, to create a home and now family. You know, he even teaches her. As you go through the movie, you see that Maisie learned what he taught her about the world and the about nature, how he trains the dinosaurs and things like that. So that's something a dad would do. Dads, dads take their offspring, their children, out into the woods or out into nature and or out into you know where, wherever their thing is and he teaches them about it i know my dad did when we were very young we had guns well we didn't have guns but we shot guns he taught us some things about hunting he taught us how to sort of deal with and connect to animals in way in certain ways he taught us how to plant food he taught us all kinds of stuff okay so that situation, I, I love that because that is like a really traditional, um, sorry, I didn't mute for some reason, a really traditional way of dealing with children. So I really love that. Uh, for my fourth point, I guess really my last one is, you know, you do have to start to be careful with the messaging in this movie because there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, sort of socialistic messaging about how we're to deal with the planet. And again, like I said before, I do think Christians should be, we should care about the world. We should care about the planet. It was given to us to manage and care for. But they go the wrong way in this movie about that. I think it's a good way to start a conversation maybe, but I still think it's, they go the wrong way. And movies always will because they don't have that Christian view on it. But... Um, I think also you have to be careful with the way they provide answers to the questions that Macy asks about herself. Okay, so Macy doesn't have traditional mom dad because she's a clone of this woman, which the woman carried inside of her, right? And although I like coming of age stories, the way we answer who we are and why we are here matters a great deal. Macy has to go through this whole thing where she doesn't believe she's a person because she was cloned, basically. And uh, the way that the movie answers that is, no, because people love you, you have value. And although people loving you is important, people's value doesn't come from whether or not someone out here loves you. It comes from the fact that you are a creature created by God, which bears his image. Okay, that's where your value comes from. All right. So, <clears throat> um, that is a very worldly way of saying, well, because you have family or because people love you, you have value and you're a person. That doesn't determine personhood, okay? But what this movie also is doing, which has been happening more and more recently, along with video games like uh, uh, Zero Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn, I think it is, uh, presenting the idea of cloning and clones being among us and deserving love and things like this. All right. <clears throat> I think, and it's not just recently that this has happened. They present it every once in a while towards us in movies and video games and books and whatever way. 
how would we deal with a clone? And part of me says, well, even if it is a clone, it's basically a copy of someone else who has the image of God. So they still do. So we'd have to do, we, they, they would be people basically. Excuse me. However, right. I don't think it's okay to be cloning people. And the reason why, because basically the, in these movies, people stepped out of the correct way for procreation. And with the dinosaurs, it created chaos, basically. In every single movie, it's chaotic. It's not good. It's not what you want to have happen. So I think that that's a good message. We shouldn't be cloning things. We shouldn't be mixing things together uh, and things like that. With Macy, they try to say, oh, it's fine because she's a human being. And so, so and therefore it would be different. But it's really not. Macy goes through a lot of heartache because she's a clone even more than just a normal teenager would of who am I why am I here what is my purpose she, her her uh, searching is doubled her heartache is doubled because of that so I think when we go down this road all we're really asking for is heartache here towards these people that we're creating so I don't think it's a good idea um, let's see let me get to my notes here um, what I do like is that ultimately Maisie found belonging through a traditional format and that is mom and dad and family, right? I do like that. Um, she calls them her folks, right? Her mom, her dad. Um, while that is how she came to terms with how she came into the world is that she does have a family and there's a lot to be said about that this situation being just like adoption as well, okay? And I already went through the doctrine of adoption in another video, so you know how I feel about that. Um, however, you, know, you just have to be careful with some of these messaging. The messaging starts to get kind of muddled where they mix traditional ideas and new ideas they want you to embrace. Okay, so just be aware of that. And like I said, of course, there's the environmental message that really just sucks. It's, there's, it's never a good message. It's never like because we have have ultimate control we are supposed to take care of things and manage them it is we have to all share and do our part and all this stuff it's like we're not we are all here but not every creature here is equal to the next one uh, a cat is not equal to a human being a tree is not equal to a human being we are their managers there we are to have dominion over them as the Bible says, and and care for them as is appropriate. So anyway, I still enjoyed the movie. I understand why people are kind of crapping on it, but at the same time, I went in this movie knowing what it was. If you have kids who are watching it, you should probably talk to them about these elements that are in here. Okay, anyway guys, I hope you had a great day. Remember to pray and read your Bible. For those of you joining me again, Thank you so much, my fellow Americans. For those of you just getting here, I make videos like this every Thursday at 4 p.m. If you'd like to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!